G'day, I'm Shane Webke, Queensland Safety Ambassador. As a farmer and a business owner myself, I know firsthand how important it is to work safely on farms. Each year around 45 workers' compensation claims are accepted for workers who have been injured working in or around a stockyard or feedlot. And half of these claims involve a serious injury where the worker needs five or more days off work. Obviously, these injuries need to stop. That's why it's good today to talk to Byron Wolf, Managing Director of Thompson Longhorn. Byron, good to see you. Great to be here, Shane. Now, all things in agriculture seemingly now are about you know, taking up of technology um, and everything that comes with it, obviously efficiency. But it has been my view, and I think maybe you'd agree with me, it's the uptake of that technology that makes, number one, the job more efficient. Sure. But seemingly that goes hand in hand with making it safer. Uh, and I'm assuming, and I'm assuming that um, in your business, which is you know building stock stock handling systems and equipment, it's at the it's at the forefront of what you do. Now you've got a case study about using drones to analyse, design, and improve cattle handling practices. Tell us about that. So back in 2014, um, we set about to do an analysis on a whole series of stockyards for a particular client. Um, and we had to collect a lot of data and observe um, what was happening with the people and the livestock in a fairly short period of time. Um, so that's when we investigated drones and, um, and bought our first drone um, and went through the process of um, observing behaviour in cattle yards. Um, there's a few interesting things you learn when you do that. Um, drones were excellent in as much as we could get a bird's eye view and the livestock weren't bothered by them and the operators weren't bothered by them. So it gave us the opportunity to be able to have a really clear look at what was happening um, while people were operating in close proximity to stock, make some observations and then leading on from that be able to you know, make some design changes or even operational changes to the way people operated their facilities based on what we could show them that they were actually doing. So that's both the actions of the, of the people handling the livestock and the actions of the livestock themselves? Absolutely. So what did it tell you? What did, what did you learn, if, you, if you're going to pick the most prominent things that came out of it, what, what was the, the most important thing that you observed? Um, it's, it's very easy to see when an operator uh, stands in a position that doesn't work well with the flow of livestock um, and it's fairly easy to be able to make a fairly simple change, move their position or move what they're, change what they're doing um, and, and then observe the result. So there's a very uh, short feedback loop on that um, and it gives you the ability to be able to demonstrate uh, to the end user why the change is required. Um, often you know, I guess if, if, if we haven't been to a particular site or worked in the cattle yard before, there might be the view that um, you don't understand or you haven't worked here before or you don't know our livestock. You know, our livestock are different to your livestock. They're all different. They're all different. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's pretty simple to make a, a, a change and then, and then have a look, you know, put the drone back there, watch it again, um, see what the outcome is, and then easy, easy to demonstrate the result. It'd be fair to say, though, it is the use of the drones which has allowed you to properly be able to look at this. Because as you say, neither the livestock or the people, because they're unobtrusive and, and they're sitting up there and they, they forget they're there. So you actually get a true indication of what really goes on on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, you get, a you, you get the unabridged version. There's no, uh, there's no pretense, there's no, there's no um, pretending. Um, it's real. And um, the great thing about seeing what's real is then you can see what, uh, well, to us it becomes really obvious about what the real change is that needs to happen. So um, to be able to get uh, the view where there's, there's no outside influence is actually fairly difficult. An observer usually has to be close to the action to see what's happening. Um, drones allow us to be close to the action but not change the outcome of the behaviour. Now tell me this, now farmers, and we're both from that background, can be a peculiar breed in, in as much as sometimes things like someone putting a drone on their place is a completely intrusive thing in their mind. And then, of course, what comes out of that? Have you had any pushback where you put a drone up and you see, you see the operation of a cattle yard and, you, and then you sit down with an owner 
and you have to show them some pretty uncomfortable stuff which is occurring is there any pushback in terms of oh well that's one thing to look at it from a drone but this is what this is this is what happens in reality blah 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 do you, do you get any of that uh no i can't think of an example where we've had that i've got to say that um the adoption of technology in agriculture is actually typically quite refreshing um, because uh, these people, I guess, traditionally haven't had resources available and, until the invent of the internet, of course, where, <laughs> where all answers are on yeah, Google. But yeah. um, before that, they're, they're limited in, in what resources they can get access to. So therefore, they become particularly resourceful breed. Mm. Um, I, I think it would be fair to say that generally, we, uh, we get quite positive response. Um, and um, even, I think I can think of one particular example uh, of a yard that we were working in the Northern Territory where there was an, a particular stock hand that simply moved up and back a raceway all day just to simply move livestock. So from a drone's perspective, he had a green shirt on. It just looked like there was this green dog, if you like, running up and back the raceway all day, pushing these cattle down. It was a really good, uh, graphic example to the management uh, and so those type of um, visual representations uh, make it the type of thing that's you know easy to see the end, easy to see the outcome e easy to see what's going on and therefore um, accepted well so when they observe a behavior that perhaps you know it's like we all we all do these things over a period of years and, and bad habits tend to creep in is there any time where you've done this and put a drone up and what you start to observe is, okay, you're looking for the efficiencies of, of stock handling, but also the safety aspect of that. So in times that they get to look at some behaviours that, that, that they've sort of, you know, it's become habitual, which are actually quite dangerous and they're not even really aware that they were doing it? Yeah, I think, I think that's a very, uh, very good point you make because I think we in the workplace generally um, will slip into those habits where um, we, we, we might have started off with good intentions and then we've sort of made it a bit quicker or cut the corner or, or whatever it is to it get... Like a fire, <laughs> to get a different result, you know, and, or to get a faster result. Uh, and then it, it becomes further and further removed from what the original intention was. It might become all about getting the job done and not necessarily about getting home safe tonight. So definitely uh, there's, I, I, I think when people get to see this stuff, they can, they can sort of review that and, and realise that what they're doing isn't what they actually, in, in a lot of cases, intended to do to begin with. So it occurs to me that the, the drones particularly will be important in a great many agricultural pursuits. But it is worth reminding people that uh, while work safety laws encourage the use of such technology to reduce work risks, it's the Civil Aviation Safety Authority that has overall responsibility for the drone regulation in Australia. So for people if you, who are considering, based on what we're talking about today, using them, contact CASA to discuss the regulations and legislation surrounding commercial drone use in Queensland. So I'm thinking about my own self now. Now we run sheep, and which is, um, uh, obviously an industry plagued by the wild dog, dingoes. Sure. So I'm thinking about things that drones, you know, outside of what you've just described, the use that you've used them for, where they will be useful. And, and all sorts of things come to mind. And number one would be, you know, like any sort of feral pest, either tracking pigs, dogs, um, and then um, plant pests in crops and that. Drones really, I, th I think, will become an incredibly important tool for farmers moving forward. Um, and particularly in the time saving aspect of not having to do it on, you know, on foot in real time. It's, it's a good point you make because um, even though we are in the livestock equipment business, we're also actual farmers as well, as you mentioned yes. earlier. Um, and even on our own farming operations, um, we've uh, used drones to have a look at cropping um, and it's quite obvious, um, in one particular instance, we had an agronomist that was recommending certain watering rates, um, and, and we followed that. Um, there was one spot in the paddock where the centre pivot irrigator stopped and ran in this one spot. The yield in that area and the change in the crop was actually so obvious from the drone footage um, that we could kind of work out that some of the agronomy wasn't right. Um, so that's in a, an agriculture sense, you know, mm. a crops sense. In cattle yards, the same type of um, 
efficiencies are, are there. Um, whether we can get a look at what's going on and make a permanent infrastructure change, that means every time we go to that cattle yard, we pick up that safety benefit, we pick up that efficiency benefit. The second part of that is then, of course, the hardest part, and that's rejigging the people. Mm. Would you agree with this observation? Because I was thinking about today and, and knew that we'd be talking around technology and all the rest of it. And then I started thinking about the great many things that, have, that technology has given us in terms, you know, all the jobs that we know and do, fencing, handling livestock, any number of things. Would you agree that each time that technology is employed uh, in, in, the, in the name of efficiency, what goes hand in hand with that is it makes it safer. Just about everything I know that made a job quicker and more efficient, it also has made it safer. And I can think of very few examples where the, where the opposite is true. I think that's absolutely true. Um, because at the end of the day, um, the efficiency is gained but often in a cattle yard um, by Im improving the, not only the infrastructure and the handling, but by reducing the amount of interactions between livestock and people where possible. So it, it, to become more efficient, we, need, we, we use less people in the cattle yard. We can only do that through clever design. Clever design is able to happen because we're able to make those observations, which the drone allows us to do. So by using the drones to, to, to get a clear picture on what's happening, improving the design, reducing the people, calmer people, calmer livestock, safer workplace. Makes sense. Um, what do you reckon comes next? So, so you, you've employed this technology and, and things are always evolving and changing and at Thompson Longhorn you're renowned for that. You always seem to be at the techno technological forefront of a lot of things uh, with, with livestock handling. What's, what's the next big innovation, do you think? Um, I think the next thing that'll happen is we'll see um, the ability, and we've played with this um, already, but it, it's not really in uh, the commercial space yet. But I think what we'll find is that we will be able to do uh, 3D augmentations of um, design. So um, we'll be able to use that data we've collected from the drone um, to help us build a virtual model of your yard or your workspace. Yep. Um, and then we'll give you a set of glasses and you will walk through the yard and, and, and actually walk through it on your place, in your location, and go, oh yeah, I can see how that fits in with my existing shearing shed in your case. Yes. Um, I see where the trucks will park or where they'll unload. I see where the stock will come in. Um, and you'll be able to get a really good feeling and appreciation of what that design would look like finished. And, um, I guess you'll, you'll be able to, or, or, or we as a supplier to the customer will be able to say, this is, this is how it'll work and this is why it'll work and we need you to experience it. And we, you, which is obviously critically important because what we're talking about is, is a, a capital expenditure, a, a major capital expenditure, which, which is important and, and, and justifiable when you can truly understand that it makes your business better mm -hmm. and i.e. safer. Mm -hmm. That's right. So once you've got a that ability to interact with this virtual thing that's not even not even a stick of steel cut yet but you can un interact with that and work out what it's like how it's like whether you think it's right you think it's wrong whatever that initial um ability to 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 work through those things before you invest in you know what's what's a significant amount of money in a lot of cases um, gives the people a lot of comfort around that as a purchasing decision and, and why that's a, a smart thing to do for their business. So for a number of reasons in agriculture, um, for a long time, there, there was a reluctance. I don't think it was a reluctant, re reluctance to spend the money to improve these things, but the money just simply wasn't there. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of agricultural producers, for want of a better description, have put up with what they've had because that's all they could afford to have. Do you see a change in the way people are thinking, and, and obviously uh, with buoyant cattle and sheep markets, uh, a preparedness to make those capital investments, which obviously make the business more efficient, but once again, we get back to the same thing, make it, make it safer. Is there, a, is there a more of a, a willingness to do so for any number of reasons? I, I definitely think there is, and, and of course it's underpinned by availability of, of finance or, or funding. Um, 
but I think that generally the livestock handling systems on a property are now probably seen as much more a, a central and pivotal role to the business. I like to use the example of the, you know, Toyota Land Cruiser wagon. Um, it's, it, it, this car, is brand new, is you know, worth 100, 120 grand and, and a lot of our um, friends and, and clients, uh, that's just the vehicle you need to do the job. Yep. And that's because they know it's safe, they, they know it's got a lot of features about it that suits their family and, and, and looking after their family. The cattle yard or the sheep yard has traditionally just been a mechanism or a tool to get a job done. Um, I think it's now becoming more obvious that this is a central point in their business, not just a tool to get a job done. And so we need to be able to take those people that we work with or, or that, that are, you know, that are our family members, are, you know, often you, you know yourself that you, your workforce is often your family members. The, the people you love and care about um, have got to go to work and be safe at work and come home and, and not spend uh, all day in the cattle yards. I often tell people that I don't think any of our new cattle yards have ever been responsible for a divorce. <laughs> we know Which is a true measure of their success. <laughs> it is. If I can recall my mother and father interacting in our sheep yards many, many years ago, it was not a pleasant experience. Absolutely. So, so uh, you know, that's, that's the point. It's got to be a, ple a pleasant experience for operators and livestock, a safe experience for both. And um, obviously, you know, we, we're much more focused now as a, in Australia in our production systems around animal welfare as well. So we've got to make sure that it doesn't take weeks to get the job done and therefore we have poor animal husbandry, uh, poor animal welfare, that it's, it's simple, it's, it's efficient, it's safe and we can get that job done and get on to the other things because these businesses are getting bigger and bigger or more and more complex. There's a lot of things that as a business owner we have to get done in the catalogs. I just, as a, as a final question, I might just get your view on this because um, it's a well-known fact how dangerous agriculture is and, and, and the statistics prove that, um, that it is the most dangerous industry in this country. The more people are hurt and, ki and killed rather and, and hurt um, in the pursuit of that than just about anything else. We both have grown up on farms and been agriculture and that means that you know you will know someone being either badly hurt or killed as a result of that occupation. What's your view on where it's it's headed in terms of people's because the other thing that has contributed to that is a very poor attitude towards safety um, and it's very much been a secondary thing for a long long time do you see a shift in that or is it something that still requires some attention um, I think it is shifting I still think I think it still requires plenty of attention um, to be fair I think um, originally um, it was seen as um, a measure that was being enforced um, through regulation, where uh, I think there's been a change in attitudes in the way that that's been implemented and rolled out, probably from a, um, um, a regulatory level. Uh, there's been a lot more effort going, in, going into making sure that <clears throat> programs um, around safety in the bush um, are being much more, I guess, cooperative or a shared approach. And I think that gets a lot better result. Um, definitely, Definitely in the space that we work in, um, it's becoming a much more a focal point uh, in, the, in the livestock handling. Um, I think that's also driven partially because unfortunately there's not that many young people going back into the bush and we're seeing older and older uh, users in the stockyards. Well Byron, look, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you today. Um, I've known you for some time and I, and I know um at the core of you is, is a deep care for number one agriculture, but also the business of, of livestock handling. And you do that very, very well. So I do hope today has, in, uh, has inspired you to think about whether you could use drones or such technology to help you work smarter, work safer, and more productively. Um, once again, Byron, thanks for your time. Thank you very much, Shane. It's been a pleasure to be here. And please remember, before any work begins on your property, stop and consider the safer and smarter way to do your work. Uh, exactly what we've been talking about here today. And make sure your staff also, most importantly, are trained on how to do that job properly. For more information and practical farm safety resources, visit worksafe.qld.gov.au.